All right. Good morning. Hope everybody is doing well on this Saturday. This is Paint with Lovejoy, and we are doing a raven today. So just making sure the video is showing up correctly for you guys. All right. And if you have any questions or comments today, please feel free to leave it in the chat. And if it's a question, I will try to address it while I'm painting. Um, so a little bit of what you're looking at today. We have our colors and we're actually using a limited color palette. Um, we'll be using the raw sienna just a little bit in the background um, and then for that eye and then everything else is gonna be done with black and white. So we'll be kind of hanging out um, in a mono, uh, monochromatic uh, painting today, just a little hint of the raw sienna. So I'm working on an eight by 10 canvas panel. So it's kind of flat. Some of you at home may be painting on a stretched canvas and there's gonna be a little more width on the side. Um, if you're painting on a stretched canvas, I recommend that when your background comes to the edge, wrap that around the side and tops and bottoms. That way it just looks nice when this hangs on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Um, and we have our composition already drawn on here. So you have two options for how you can get this on your composition on your panel at home. You can pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or um, there's a link in the description box below and there's something called a traceable. You can purchase the traceable, download it, you print it out, and then with carbon paper, you will transfer it to your surface. And the carbon paper um, actually comes out really light. You know, it's a real light um, blue or black line that gets transferred. So it's really easy to cover with uh, paint. I went over my outlines with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. So those of you using the traceable, your line will be a lot lighter. And the traceables are a nice way for my first time and beginner painters to get your composition on the canvas, not have to stress and freak out about drawing and jump right into the process of painting. So whichever option you go for, um, doesn't matter, just pause the video and then pick it up where you need to. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna have kind of a, a light, creamy, kind of slight beige, really light background. And I'm gonna to try to keep it a little bit lighter right here and then goes a little bit darker towards the edge. And then we will be doing shades of dark gray for our Raven today. With this video and any video on my channel, you are more than welcome to use crayons or markers or colored pencils. You don't have to follow along and use paint. Um, and it just makes it fun. I really just want you to get creative. And if you feel like changing anything, if you wanna do a purple sky or a blue sky, maybe a red raven, you have full permission to switch out colors and make it your own. Just use these videos as a guideline or a base um, just to kind of help you along with the steps. So I'm gonna make kind of a light creamy color. So I'm gonna start with the white. And because I'm on an eight by 10 panel, I am on a smaller flat brush. Um, if you're on a bigger canvas, you could, you know, move up and change to a more appropriate brush size. Or if you're on something smaller, feel free to use smaller brushes. But adjust your tools um, based on what you're painting on to what you need. So again, pulled some of that white aside, threw a little bit of that raw sienna, so it kind of comes into this light, creamy beige color. Now yours may be a little darker or lighter than mine, doesn't really matter. But get it to a shade that you kind of like. And as we fill in the background, try a few different brush strokes. You've got your full width brush stroke, then turn that brush sideways, makes a little bit of a skinnier line. And then I think an all time favorite by everybody is literally just slapping your brush on the canvas and filling that in. Uh, that particular brush stroke is very therapeutic. So if you have any um, anxiety or stresses or frustrations from the week, it is nice to just slap it into your canvas and put it into your background. And that's really the important process of painting is just escaping the world for a little bit, doing your thing and just kind of zoning out and kind of switching uh, sides of the brain a function when you're being creative. And we need to do that every now and then that keeps you balanced. So as you're making your color, if you have to mix it a second or third or fourth time, don't stress about the exact same shade. I will go over the wet on wet blending uh, concept after we fill this in. We'll add a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. And same, should you actually paint on the inside of your design, don't stress out. We just let it dry and you can paint another color on top of it. 
And since the Raven is going to be shades of dark gray, it will compensate and um, cover other colors very nicely. All right, so let's see. I see some activity happening on the chat. We got quite a few people jumping on today. Let's see. Hi, Caitlin and Jim and Denise and Dino and Kat. Awesome, awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out and all of you that um, are watching the video but don't leave a comment in the chat. Thanks for just taking time out of your day to hang out with me. Um, you guys are a huge reason why I started doing the daily demos. Um, and you're also the main reason why my online school has had has grown in the directions that it has. So please keep sharing your creative efforts with your community, encouraging other people to paint. And even if you don't refer them to my website, just anything, just get more people to be creative um, and a little bit happier in their worlds. And with that being said, I recommend that all of you um, check out other artists on YouTube. Keep pushing your own skills um, and pushing your own comfort level with your creative efforts. And I do, like I said, I encourage that you check out a bunch of different teachers because sometimes they may explain something that I explain in a different manner um, and it makes more sense to you. So gathering a large collection of knowledge is only to your benefit. All right, so now we're going to do the wet on wet blending. We kind of have our base of our background color and I've got a big chunk of white on my brush. So we're going to kind of just slap this on here and I want it a little bit lighter close to the Raven and then a little bit darker as we get towards the edge of the canvas. So as we do the wet on wet blending, if you've never done it before, um, your background has to be wet, hence the name wet on wet blending, and then you're introducing a new wet color to it. So with the lighter colors, once you introduce it, um, they're going to kind of diffuse quickly with the base color compared to the darker color when we add it, a little bit of dark color goes a long way. So you'll kind of find your balance between your light colors and your dark colors as you're blending. So after you slap that white on there, wipe that brush off for the excess paint. And then we're going to kind of smush and smear. Um, you could do a little bit of a tapping effect to kind of blend the two colors. And you'll notice that it doesn't stay that pure white, um, but it does lighten up a little bit. And again, you'll notice that the more you move your brush, the more that white is going to diffuse into um, the base color. So if you need to, like I'm doing right here, reapply your white if you lost that effect and then go back and do your blending again. And like I said earlier, this is just something that you're going to find your groove with blending. Um, and it may be a little bit different than what I described, or it may be a combo of a few things. But the more that you do this, the more comfortable you'll get with this process. And there's really no absolute right or wrong way to paint. The only way to fail at painting is to not paint. Okay, so um, we're going to go a little bit darker and this will help give us a bit of a contrast. So grabbing that uh, raw sienna by itself, we're going to put it kind of on the edges. And I'm being kind of slightly generous with it um, just because I do want that to go a little bit darker and then wipe that brush off and then same thing just kind of keep that light pressure and watch how it just kind of blends together your brain's taking in a lot of information each time that you uh, paint each time that you mix colors um, even when you're holding a brush your brain's remembering the muscle memory of what it feels like for light pressure compared to more pressure and that's just part of the process of painting um, constantly just kind of improving your own skills. So again, as I blended that in, it was just kind of light pressure, dusting over it. If you even feel like finger painting, go right ahead and do that. So do everything that you want to your background while it's still wet. And then we'll be moving on into um, our Raven. And I'm gonna throw a little bit more white on the plate. And I think there's a few questions, let's see. Mm, okay, so Dito's asking, is it easier to uh, get the traceable or is it easier to draw it? Uh, good question. And I will also add, uh, where to go, the rhino to the list. So good suggestion for that. Okay, so 
uh, and a minigun. All right, I'm seeing all of it at the same time. Okay, so the difference between a traceable and drawing it freehand. And if you scroll um, in the description box below, again, you'll see the link for the traceable. And that's a little bit easier just because you are literally tracing on top of it. So you don't have to think too much. For drawing it on your own, there's also a video down in the link below on basically putting a grid on the traceable and then drawing it section by section. So that kind of helps. Um, I highly recommend that just for good practice, draw what you see. And even if you have to draw it three or four times, you're getting good practice. So the only way you're going to get better at drawing what you see is through practice. Um, and even if you practice that drawing and then throw it away immediately, that's okay. That still counts as practice. Um, and that's the only way you'll get better with it. All right. Um, let's see. I don't see any other questions at the moment. Okay. So we're going to move into our Raven. And we're going to be doing shades of light gray. So we're going to start with our dark spaces first. We'll start with that pure black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing these here in just kind of um, specific areas and they're going to be kind of abstract shapes. So I want you to just mimic to the best of your ability what you see on the video and mimic that to your camp on your canvas. And as you do that, like I said earlier, you're strengthening your power of observation. I'm actually going to move down to a pointy brush. These are going to be smaller spaces. Um, and that just helps with everything in life, the more you become observant. Okay, so just move down to the small pointy brush. I think we'll be making little dots. And again, we're just kind of placing these in certain areas. Uh, remember to breathe as you're painting. I think I forgot to mention that during the background. And then we'll be making some dark gray and then lighter gray. Um, I've got a nice big highlight right here and then on the beak. And as you get in the groove of painting, I do recommend, and uh, I talk about it more on my um, edited videos, but I recommend that you take progress photos and then go back and look at your progress photos and start noticing how your painting looks different um, with each picture as you get rid of more and more of the white canvas space. Um, and it's very satisfying to kind of see your skills improve and kind of watch the painting come to life. So on my edited videos on the YouTube channel, I have um, pause the video and take your progress photo uh, little sections on there. And I recommend you doing that in pretty much anything creative that you do. All right, and I am being rather generous with the application of the amount of paint here because I am making sure that everything's covered up. So as you're looking at this, if there's areas inside that kind of look like this section right here to where you can see the white of the canvas or the texture of the canvas, go back and reapply with more black paint or uh, paint of whatever color you were using. All right, a few more spaces and then we'll be making a dark gray. And if you're finding that as you go to apply each brush stroke that your, your hand's kind of shaky, um, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will make it a little bit easier for you. And then these little feathers right here, I am just making sure that they kind of come off the body and there's, you know, little indentations there. So feel free to add that to yours. And like I said earlier, if I paint something in an area that you're like, nah, I don't really want to do that. You don't have to do that. Okay. All right, taking shape. So now we're gonna make our dark gray. So I'm just gonna kind of twirl um, some of that excess black paint off of my brush. And then we're gonna start grabbing white. And I'll put that pile there. And again, we're going for a dark black, a dark gray first. So again, putting that white a little bit on the edge and then you just kind of start pulling that into the black and yeah, it looks, it doesn't look like it's washed too much out from the light, but you can see a difference between the dark black and then the dark or pure black and then the dark gray. So basically you want to go down about two steps, two shades to your dark gray for our next section. And as we do this one, I'm going to kind of use light pressure and we're going to be moving the brush kind of in a direction like this. So we're getting a bit of this curve happening here. 
And I'm going to make a lot more dark gray because I will be using more. And same with the background. If you have to mix your shades of gray a couple of times, don't freak out or stress out about trying to get the exact same shade every time. And as you paint today or any time that you paint, um, please send me photos of what you paint. I really enjoy seeing those and I like posting them on social media. It does encourage so many other people to try painting. Um, so email those to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in your social media outlets as you're uploading and just tag paint with love joy. Alright, let's get the beak on here. And then we're going to be making the next lighter shade. Let's see if there's any other. Oh, let's get the top of that head. And then we'll move down the shade. Alright. And still looking kind of funny. That's okay. They are supposed to look weird. To me right now, he looks like a weird toucan um, on the, the video that I'm looking at. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now I'm going a little bit lighter. I'm basically going to mix right on top of that pile. I'm going a little bit lighter. And again, you can kind of see the step down effect as we do kind of the value scale for our shades of gray here. And now we'll, and actually that's pretty close to the same color. So let's go a little bit lighter. And you may notice that you may mix a shade of gray on here. And then when you come to apply it, you go, ah, oh, that's so close to the last color. Uh, you have full permission. It's okay to adjust your color um, after you've applied it to the canvas. And what you're witnessing is what we call color theory. Um, because we're looking at this on a white plate, we interpret the color one way. Compared to taking that same color and interpreting it here, and then when we apply it next to a darker color or even on top of something like that, um, it changes the way that we look at it. And color theory is the concept that we interpret our colors based on the color next to it. Um, and sometimes when it's placed next to another color, it may look larger. And then when it's placed next to a different color, it looks smaller. So that's part of the magical illusion of being a painter. Uh, all of you guys are magicians as you paint. You are creating this illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. It's just nice to say you're magicians too. All right, and let's see, the beak definitely gets this lighter gray. And again, should you paint anything um, and later decide that it needs a different color or, or you know needs to be adjusted, all you do is just make that appropriate color and then paint right on top of the spot you did not like or needed to adjust. That is one of the nice things about uh, acrylic paint. a little bit lighter on the top of that beak and let's see I was looking to see if there's any other questions oh hi Rhonda hi Jen thanks for jumping on okay all right so let's start getting a little bit down here and then after we have our base on here and there's no canvas space showing then we'll be going back with all the shades of gray and applying on top of some of these other colors. So what we're getting to right now is what we call the underpainting. And I personally feel like my painting has begun once my underpainting is finished. I actually don't like painting on top of the white canvas. I feel like I can create so much more depth when I put more layers on. And if anybody would like to see uh, my professional work, um, there's a link in the description box below to my portfolio, but it's Lovejoy Creations. And I paint more in a palette knife style. And I'll scrape on close to 100 layers on my paintings before I consider I'm done. Oops, go a little bit lighter. And I still hang out kind of in that wildlife genre. That is my favorite. And in my traditional, my regular work, I use a lot of unexpected colors for my animals. Okay, so now we're going to be making a lighter gray. 
And again, just pulling more white on top of that. And I still like doing the steps down just so that way I can go, okay, we're going lighter than what we did. All right, that looks close, might not be light enough. So let's see. Nope, let's go lighter. And what I'm actually gonna do, since I have so much of this color made, I'm actually gonna take some of that color and make a new pile. Otherwise, I'd actually have to add tons and tons of white to that amount of paint just to tone it down. So if you're finding that that happens for you and you just keep feel like you're just throwing so much paint in there to change the color, um, especially as you're trying to go lighter, sometimes you might just need to make a brand new fresh pile. So full permission to do that as needed. So I've gone, got, gone ahead, we've got a light gray and then a extra light gray and then white. So I went ahead and made my next two colors. So since this was kind of our last color that we were using, I want you to go two shades lighter than your last color. And it should be, like I said, at kind of a light gray. And because each one of us um, mixes our colors differently and sees things differently, your colors may be a little bit different than what I have and that's totally okay. That is also part of the art process of just each person has their own interpretation, their own way that they see things. Okay, so basically filling in that last spot, we're gonna put some of this up on the beak and then we'll get the eyeball in there and then we're gonna go back and start doing our fine details. Okay, so right now it looks kind of like a cutout after we do the eye, we're gonna come in with our other shades of gray on top of here and even some black and we'll be bringing it in there. Um, so like I said, take your progress pictures and just go back and study them after you are done painting. All right, so clean that uh, pointy brush out really good. Um, this raw sienna, you could use it by itself if you'd like. I'm gonna go just a touch darker. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of black to it. And that's a little darker than I want. So we make a new pile. There we go. So I still wanted it to stay kind of brown, just kind of um, toned it down a little bit with some of that black. All right, so as you do this, um, if you happen to go over that black uh, pupil or even that white catch light, don't freak out because um, we can reapply it again um, later. All right, and I will likely do a second coat because I'm using student grade paint. It's kind of on the transparent side. And if you're using student grade paint, um, you can apply it a little bit thicker or you can do what I'll do on the eye and do two coats after it dries. Okay, so let's go back to that light gray that we were using. And as we do these, because um, I'm going to keep kind of a bit skinnier lines as we work on the, the uh, kind of, I guess, the chest plume of our raven here. And then we've got some little lines. I'm going to try to keep light pressure as we do some of the skinny lines. So if this is your first time using the brush, be kind to yourself. But if you kind of pretend that the brush is a pencil and use just the tip of the brush, that will help to make some of these skinnier lines. And you might also want to put a pinky out. Use that as a steady pivot point as you're working or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. You're gonna use a certain amount of muscles to try to hold your hand steady. So if you give yourself a resting point um, to help that steadiness, you won't, uh, your arms won't tire as quickly. So try a few things um, and just keep finding your comfort level. All right, so as we do this chest plume, we're just kind of keeping these uh, long skinny lines and we're kind of coming from underneath the beak and then we're gonna start curving around as we go down here. And we're gonna do this with a couple of colors. So we will be overlapping some of these areas. And notice that probably every two or three brush strokes, I am grabbing more paint. Um, you're gonna kind of get into a groove of making these marks. Um, so, Remember to always go back and kind of reload your brush because you don't want to get in the groove of making the marks but not applying paint. And again, just kind of observe the direction that some of these brush strokes are going. 
and all you're doing is just kind of mimicking that and strengthening your observation skills. We will, like I said, overlap some of the other colors on here. All right, and then as we get up into the beak, we're getting into smaller little brush strokes. And again, kind of keep that light pressure. And if you're noticing that as you make your marks, your brush strokes just keep getting wider and wider and wider. Take a look at your brush. Do you have a lot of paint buildup where the metal and the bristles meet? And if you do, that's spreading the bristles apart. So wipe off that excess paint, possibly clean your brush out really good. And then notice that as you wipe it off and clean it, it brings those bristles back together. So every now and then take a look at your brush and notice, do you need to clean it? Do you need to do a little bit of brush maintenance? Um, but do what you need to do to keep making your art. So again, just tiny little um, dash marks as we move here on the face. We're going to be moving around the eye. And here doing little, just tiny, tiny little dots overlapping each other as we get this highlight on the forehead. And again, just kind of observe the different contrast of what things look like when you put a dark color next to a light color. And start noticing just how you observe it. A big portion of art is how you observe your world. And that again is another very unique quality to you. You know, you're going to have your own observation and that's why art is unique to you. Okay, so let's see. Now let's start going a little bit darker. So clean that brush. And again, kind of nice to leave your levels here. Um, so you can know that we'll be going back to this color and possibly a little bit darker. And if you need to make this color again, again, you've had good practice making that. Um, or if you have enough on your plate, uh, you can work with what's on there. All right, so we need to get a little bit of these in here. And again, these are just short little overlapping dots. Don't think too much. Don't try to make this more difficult than it needs to be. It's just painting. And here, because my lighter gray is still wet, as I'm putting this darker gray into it, it is blending a little bit. So if you are, um, uh, encountering the same thing, go ahead and soften that line between the two shades of gray. If you are not, if you're painting a little bit slower, or your paint's drying really fast and this is already dry, that's okay too. Just embrace that and then maybe these darker gray will be a little bit more solid and that's okay. It's still going to look like a raven and it's still something that you painted and again notice that while you paint the rest of the world kind of ceases to exist for a little bit. And that's the best part of painting. So escape your world as often as you need to. Okay, so now let's go, actually let's use this color a little bit right here. It's not a huge difference, but just even overlapping a few of these lighter lines. And I'm going to go ahead and clean the brush just to bring those bristles back together. And we're going to go a little bit darker. And I actually need to make a little bit more of that. So I'm going to pull some of this white aside and start pulling the black into it. And we're going for not quite that super dark gray that we were using, uh, but we're kind of going for about this color. Just a little bit darker. And if you need to, you can kind of twirl your brush as you pull it out of the paint. And sometimes that helps keep you uh, with a pointy tip. All right, and going back underneath, starting at the beak. And these again, we're going to be overlapping some of the other lines, some of the lighter ones. And again, remember to breathe, light pressure. You're doing great. And again, just kind of overlapping some of these lighter uh, strokes that we did a moment ago. 
and this helped getting nice fluff and depth on our bird, on our raven. And so we got a little bit here. And again, this is still a little bit wet, so it makes it easy to kind of soften those lines. But if you're not at that point, that's okay. Okay, now we need to start bringing some of that into here. And again, these are just kind of short, choppy little dash marks. So when you're in your beginning stages of painting, dots and dash marks um, are generally your friend as you get more and more comfortable with the brush. And in my class yesterday, um, we got to teach outside over at Paradise Point. It was really nice. Um, and I got one of the guys, it was him and his girlfriend, their one year anniversary, and he was really scared to paint. Uh, so I got him to finger paint and he had so much fun. He turned back into like a five year old. So it made for just a great little, uh, I believe it was their one year anniversary party. So it was nice to see. So again, just push yourself a little bit um, back into being a five year old while you're painting and just enjoy the process. And whoever you're painting with, enjoy the company of them. If you're painting by yourself, enjoy your own company. Um, but yeah, just please keep getting creative. Okay, a little bit more under the beak. And then we are actually going to move back into that pure black paint, get some more definition going. And then I'll probably do a few bright white highlights. And that will bring us into the conclusion of today's painting. So just going a little bit beyond the... Um, 30 minute mark today. Not bad. And starting after tomorrow's painting, I will be moving down to just basically three days a week. This has been awesome. And I think we're close to over a hundred days that I've been doing the daily demos. And this was started in response to the lockdown and the pandemic and just my thing that I could do for everybody out there and give them some painting options. And it's been fun. It's been great to have that regular, uh, scheduled event that I'd have to do every day, uh, especially when we didn't know where things were going way before everything started to reopen. So it's been awesome, but uh, some work is starting to uh, come back and my contracts are picking back up again. So going down to three days um, just makes it easier as I move forward. But please keep sending me your um, uh, suggestions for subject matters. Um, I think tomorrow I'll be making the rest of the list for the next couple of months and getting the traceables out there so you can purchase them prior to the class. Um, but yeah, like I said, just leave comments um, either in the chat or in uh, the comments below of your subject matters that you want. So here as I do the line on the beak, you can reference that traceable again for exactly where that line is if you need to. But it kind of splits that beak in half. And then definitely keeping with just uh, light pressure and short little dash marks as I go back and enhance and darken all the shadows again. So a lot of times with painting, it is a back and forth. You'll go in and put your darks in and then you put your lights and then you got to go back and put your darks and then you got to go back and put your lights. So it is a bit of a back and forth. So don't feel bad after you've done one session and then you go, oh, let's go back and make this part darker. Let's make this part lighter. Um, you can do a lot of layering effects with acrylic paint. And sometimes when you live with a painting for a while, you start to see what you like and don't like and what you want to change. And that's okay too, so go for it. You are communicating with your canvas and with your creative process. And there is nothing wrong with communicating with that more with yourself. It helps you kind of push your skills to the next your next level, your next direction. So again, using that black and I'm moving into the chest feathers and kind of still keeping with that same direction um, from the brush strokes that we set up earlier. I am overlapping some of the other lines. And as you get into this stage, um, I recommend getting out of your chair, prop your painting up, look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And this is the normal viewing distance 
for most everything in life and especially for artwork. Um, things tend to look better from a distance, so don't be upset if you like your painting more from five or ten feet away compared to two feet in front of your face while you're painting. That's just life. Um, but when you're looking at it from a distance, if you're looking and go, you know what, maybe I need a little bit more darkness around the eye. Maybe I need a little bit brighter highlight right here. I want you to trust those things that you're observing, and then when you go back to your painting, add those into your painting. And this will just help your overall creative process by learning to look at stuff from the distance and perspective that the viewers um, are going to be looking at it and adjusting what you need to for that perspective. Okay, so on the eyeball, if you happen to go over that pupil and over that little white, um, you can reapply it. So intentionally, I am gonna go over that white dot just so you guys can see the difference and actually the power of that little white dot on top of the black. Um, but yeah, if you need to reapply your pupil, go ahead and do that. And then, like I said, when we get rid of that white catch light, it turns our raven, our animal, into a zombie. But basically, reapply your catch light. And I did do a little bit of eyeliner earlier around the eyeball. And if some of these small, tiny little lines are proving very frustrating for you, um, if you have a toothpick or a paper clip, an unfold the paper clip, you can use just the tip of that to make some of these tiny lines. So adjust for what you need. Okay, so now we're gonna put in pure white for a few highlights. I'll reapply that catch light and then a few highlights and then that brings us into the conclusion of today's painting. All right, so for that highlight, clean that brush off really good. We're gonna use pure white paint and we're literally gonna come in um, at a 90 degree angle, come in perpendicular, place a dot and pull our brush right back. And again, you can reference that traceable for where the dot is and remember to exhale as you touch the canvas and pull your brush right back to make that dot. So now we're going to take some of that white on the edge of the beak. We're going to put some of our highlights on here. And then, like I said, that will be it for today's painting. And tomorrow, I, I think it's a rose, and that will be kind of fun. And then we'll, for next Friday, um, I'll schedule those this afternoon. It'll be a premiere to where I won't physically, uh, I won't be doing live painting, but I'll be able to talk to everybody um, through the video chat. And then Saturday and Sundays, I'll still do these live paintings. But the Friday ones will be more of my edited, um, cleaner, non-technical issued uh, videos. And some of the tech issues of the last couple weeks really um, got me frustrated. But that's all part of the learning curve. And I also, another reason I started this channel was to show my first time of beginner students that I'm stepping out of my comfort zone just as much as you are stepping out of your comfort zone to try painting. Uh, live video being in front of the camera is not my favorite thing, which is also why we have the perspective of the demos to where you don't see my face, but you just get to watch the video. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show everybody that I'm still stepping out of my comfort zone to do stuff, to give you guys videos. Um, and if you go back and look at some of my beginning videos compared to what I'm doing now, you can see a huge increase um, in my comfort level. And that's what I want you guys to kind of have your little aha moments with painting too. Find your moments of just, okay, that makes sense. All right, cool, let's go do more. So constantly keep challenging yourself, pushing your comfort zone. And as I look at this, that highlight right there is way brighter than I want. So I'm gonna go back to the, my light gray and just kind of tone that down a little bit. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And as I'm looking at the video um, while I'm painting, I'm actually looking at it through the video that's looking at it from 20 feet away so I can kind of uh, look over and go, all right, this needs to be adjusted, maybe a little bit here. So keep getting in that habit of looking at your painting from a distance. All right, we're going to get one little highlight around the eye, almost kind of like eyeliner. And 
one more little highlight right here. Excellent. Okay, well, this was a fun painting today. I always love it when it's animals. Um, the landscapes do really well here too, uh, but I am obviously very partial to the animals. Okay, so yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, please send me your photos of what you paint. Um, full permission to change any colors, anything about this. Please still send me your photos. Um, I'm just really proud of you guys for painting and just getting creative. So, um, hope you have a great Saturday wherever you are at in the world. And I will see everybody tomorrow. Have a great day. Cheers.